Hi, in the first video, we have learned how to calculate the work done on an object by a single force. So what happened if we have multiple forces on one single object as shown in this diagram here, the box is an object and we have three forces on this object, which is F1, F2, F3. They have different directions. They have different magnitudes. Under the influence of these three forces, the object is moving to the right and the distance it moves by is D. So what is the total work done on this object? Well, we can, of course, calculate the every single work done by individual force and then add them up because work is a scalar. Or we can calculate the total net force first. Like we can add F1, F2, F3 together, but don't forget that all forces are vectors. You have to do vector addition. But graphically, the, the net force will be roughly in this direction. And then we can use this net force to calculate the total work on this object. We can treat this net force as a single force. And this net force has angle theta from the direction of displacement. And that's why we can use this formula, F net times D times cosine theta to calculate for the total work. Graphically, we understand the work as the area under the F times cosine theta versus D graph. In the first diagram, if the force and angle theta are constants, then the F cosine theta is supposed to be a straight line. Then the area under the curve basically is the area of a rectangle. Now, if the force is not a constant, we can still treat the total area as the sum of many, many small rectangular shape. For every single small area, if it's small enough, it can be viewed as a rectangle. So still, the overall area is summation of every single one. And uh, if we do this, to infinite number of small rectangular shape, it will transition to integral. So that will be calculus. But physically, this is the idea to deal with when force is not constant. Now, I'm going to derive a very important theorem. And let me start from the simplest case. If we have a single object, and there are multiple, multiple forces on this object. Assuming that the net force is pointing to the right. F net is to the right. And also, we can assume the direction of the displacement. This object will move is also to the right. Let's use D represent the distance of the displacement. At the beginning, this object is moving at a velocity of vi. And finally, this object is moving at a velocity of vf. And both vi and vf are velocities. So we can use Newton's law and some kinematics equation to derive a very important theorem. And here's what I'm gonna show you. First of all, based on Newton's second law, we know that the net force on one single object is equal to the mass of this object times the acceleration. Of course, F net and acceleration both are vectors. And we also know that based on kinematics, this object is undergoing a constant acceleration motion and specifically this is a one-dimensional 
constant acceleration motion. And there is one equation in kinematics which says the total distance is equal to Vf square minus V initial square divided by two times acceleration. If we just focus on one dimension, which is horizontal direction, then this vector can be reduced to a component which is equal to m times a. And let's find what is the total work on this object between initial and the final points. And we know that w net is equal to f net times d times cosine theta. And let's replace f net and d with equation 1 and equation 2. And also don't forget that theta is equal to 0 degrees. In this particular case, it is equal to 0 degrees, but in general, it's not. However, I will show you that the result of my derivation is applied to all general cases. Anyway, so F net times D basically is equal to MA and times V final square minus V initial square divided by 2A and times cosine zero and we know cosine zero is equal to one. Here, A can be canceled and what is left is a two term expression which is one half times m times v f square minus one half times mass times initial velocity square. In other words, the net work done on this object is equal to subtraction of two terms and these two terms have the same format and here is what we're going to define this term all right so one more time the network on a system which can be a single object or can be a group of objects is equal to the change in the quantity of one half m v squared and v can be final or initial so this is what we just derived and we didn't use uh, v um we didn't use v and v0 we use vf and v initial but here v stands for final velocity and v0 is initial velocity so this is exactly the same as what we just derived and because these two terms are similar that's why we can define each of them as a very important energy we call them kinetic energy and kinetic energy is a type of energy which stands for the amount of the motion energy so kinetic energy basically means motion energy which is defined as one half times mass times speed square and ke is going to be the symbol i will use in the future for kinetic energy let's have one example here we have one object which is equal to 30.0 kilograms and there are two forces actually there are four forces acting on this object we have a applied force 120 newtons and we have a frictional force 5.00 newtons and of course we have a gravity w downward and we have a normal force upward so here is the question a calculate the network done on the package all right so we know that the network done on the package is equal to the net force times this distance times cosine zero and we know that the net force on this object is equal to the total force between f applied and frictional force in x direction so f net 
is equal to F applied plus frictional force plus gravity and plus normal force. But we know that gravity and normal force is equal to zero because they are opposite and the same uh, magnitude. And F applied and frictional force are opposite, but F applied is more than frictional force. So F net can be easily find, which is equal to 120 minus 5.00, and which is equal to 115.0 newtons. And this is in to the right direction. So F net, we can use here to solve F net is equal to 115 newtons to the right. And we know D is equal to 0 0.8 0, 0 meters. And angle theta is equal to 0 because D is also pointing to the right. To the right. Typo to the right. So cosine theta is equal to 1. That's, that's why W net is equal to 115 times 0 0.800 times 1. And this is equal to we can calculate 115 times 0 0.8 is 92 joules. And this is answer to part A. Part B says solve the same problem in part A, this time by finding the work done by each force that contributes to the net force. Well, okay, we can do this individually. We can find first W applied is equal to 120 times 0 0.800 and times cosine and from here, we know F applied is point to the right and D is to the right. That's why both are in the same direction. We have zero degrees. And this you can solve equals 96 joules. And, uh, and W frictional force is equal to five times 0 0.800 and times cosine. Now, frictional force is to the left. So D is the right. That's why angle is equal to cosine 180 degrees, which is equal to negative four joules. One more time, work can be negative. It depends on the direction. And uh, the work done by gravity is equal to gravity times 0 0.800 times cosine. If you look, this W is downward, but D is to right. So the angle between them is 90 degrees. And which gives zero joules, no matter how big W is. Same thing for the normal force, normal force times 0 0.800 times cosine and the angle between normal force and D is also 90 degrees, which is why we have cosine 90 again, and this is equal to zero joules also. Therefore, W net is equal to all this together, 96 minus four plus zero plus zero, which is equal to 92 joules again. So the answer to part B is same as answer to part A.